What's up everybody? In this video, we'll be talking about the NIV personal size Bible large print in brown buffalo. Let's see what this is about. All right, welcome back. And let's take a look at this Bible. Now, I want to preface this because we have to have the right perspective when we look at this Bible. I have to gauge my level of criticism based on one key factor and that is the retail. The retail in this Bible is only 120, so that's super affordable. And if the retail is only 120, that means that they're probably gonna be selling around 70 to $90. I think right now on Amazon, they're about 95, and on Christian Book, they're even less. So check the link below and see where the best deal is for you to purchase. So with that said, we can't compare this Bible to other premium editions or even really top grain editions that have a much higher retail. So we have to look at that in the light of this being more a genuine leather as it's described on the box. So with comparing this to a genuine leather edition, honestly, this leather feels like pigskin to me. It just feels like a ordinary genuine leather edition. It looks like the grain is not natural. It looks like the grain's impressed into it, but that's no different from any other genuine leather edition. A pig skin is gonna have the grain impressed into it as well. So I don't wanna be too hard on the fact that it looks like the grain's not natural. It does have raised ribs. That's awesome. The fact that it has perimeter stitching and raised ribs on the spine it's really like a imitation premium Bible. Let's open it up and see if that continues on the inside of the edition. I mean, this is an edge line construction on a genuine leather Bible, so that's great. I don't know if that's actual leather or synthetic, but it does come with a gilt line on the interior of the liner. So it really mimics their Premier Collection editions. It's like a Premier Collection's little brother. That's, that's what this looks like. The cover leather's not as good. The liner is not as good, but the construction's the same. Raised ribs on the spine's the same. You have two double-sided satin ribbons. That's great. You also have an art gilt. It's a really faint red under gold art gilt, but it's there. So let's jump into the text of this edition. And this is printed in China in 2020. And it is the NIV personal size Bible large print. Now this is where I'm gonna be a little more critical of this edition. When we open this edition up, we get past the uh, books and the preface and we get to the text. And this is something really weird. Okay, so someone please let me know if this is planned or if this was missed or, or what. You see how this text is laid out. You have Genesis one, the first line is indented and then the entire paragraph section is indented over. And then you get to verse three and it's indented. And then the entire section from three through five is indented over further. And you can see how this looks. You have a, a chunk of this column missing on the left side of both columns. That same design is following. You have the paragraph start at 24 and then the whole paragraph is indented over. 27, the whole thing's indented over. And then you get down to Genesis two, verses one, two and three has that same design, but on verse four and five and throughout the rest of it, it, it changes. Why is it like this? This is how it should be. I don't understand why that mistake was made. If it's a mistake, I don't know why it wasn't caught. It's the first pages of the, of the Bible. So anyway, somebody can please let me know if this is intentional or a mistake or what. Now this edition does have an 11 and a half point font. So it's a very, very large font size on this NIV cover print font. It's not line matched, but with the heavy dark printing of this NIV text and it being an 11 and a half point font, it makes it kind of even out on the readability scale. I really wish it would have been line matched though. If it were line matched, it would have been a thicker edition. So uh, maybe that's more valuable to you if you have that larger print size and it's a dark print, but you'll have a smaller edition. In Joshua 13, you see where it gets into this section. It's indented on both sides here. That's not the same as it was in Genesis 1, where it's only indented on one side. 
uh, but it's indented on both sides evenly. Now, I don't know if Genesis 1 is supposed to be like Joshua 13 and other parts, but there's a lot of sections where it goes away from that indention and then it comes back to that indention. Um, maybe someone can explain why it's like that. So here on Joshua 12, uh, you can see this the text size and the uh, columns are the same width. It, it lends to good readability. You don't see any distracting uh, indentions. But here on Joshua 12, you can see uh, it indents in on both sides and creates a much thinner column. Parts of this, it's indented even further. So it, it starts with an indention, then it indents again. It looks kind of odd. Because this edition is not line matched and it's a dark printing, when you create those voids in text on that column, it, it really adds a lot of distracting show through. Another note is that this text really, really dives into this gutter. Now I know this is meant to be a personal size edition, but that text is just really far in there. As we get to the New Testament, we can see this is a red letter text and the red is pretty nice. It's not very dark. For some reason, it looks a little lighter than the normal red that I've seen. Now there's some portions, uh, maybe due to it being such a dark printing, that the red with the black behind it uh, just creates a lot of weird show through uh, due to the fact it's not line matched. So here on John 12, uh, you can really see this on verses 23 through 28. Now at the end of the text, we have four pages of note paper but this paper's so thin, you don't wanna write on this. You can see that even what's printed here based on the NIV typeface is showing through. So anything you write on this paper is gonna show through the other side. It's just, the paper's just too thin. We have eight maps that are on glossy cardstock and then uh, your end sheet. And you can see the continuation of this gilt line on the inside of the cover. So what do I think about this thing? For the money, it's a pretty good value because you'll end up buying this thing for around $75, $85, or $90, being that it's an edge-lined leather cover, raised ribs. It has 11 and a half point font. Now, granted, the issues I have with the text has some weird indenting. I don't know what that's about. It has a lot of ghosting due to it not being line matched. That should probably be changed, but uh, it's really readable most of the time. You do have art guilting, so for $75, $80, $90 to get all of that in one package is a pretty great deal. I really think they could do better with their stamping on this buffalo leather. It looks kind of amateur hour, and the impressed grain kind of takes away from the whole feel of it being a buffalo leather. I mean, this just doesn't look natural at all. You lose any real uniqueness that made the buffalo different from pigskin and other leathers. Now, if they were making this Bible in the Premier Collection, my standards would be much, much higher for the quality in the block, the design of the text, the cover construction, and the leather being used, uh, I would be much more critical. Uh, but again, this is half the price. Anyway, I'll leave the judgment up to you guys. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. And as always, thank you for watching. God bless.